channel. Now, just before I start, I just want to say thank you to two people that had offered to donate a couple of items, both pairs of speakers, uh, to the channel over the last week or so. One was Alex and one was James. So thank you for the uh, offers there. I, I declined both pairs because I really haven't got the room. I've got loads of uh, speaker bits and pieces like drivers and crossovers hanging about here everywhere out their cases, out their cabinets, shall I say, and still got the cabinets here as well. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a skip or something to get rid of them. I used to burn them in the old place where I used to live, but uh, can't really burn them here. The neighbors are pretty close by and I don't smoke all over their washing and all that. And I haven't got a bin or nothing like that, so uh, I don't do any more of that. So they're clogging up the place, let's put it that way. So, But thanks for the offers, really appreciated. Uh, but as like I say, sorry, I just really haven't got the room at the moment and I would have took both pairs. Right, today's video is a video I've been uh, tinkering around really over the last week really. Uh, just doing a few experiments really, just something I was just suddenly coming to my head and I thought I'll give that a go. What I'm going to do is just going to change one capacitor per channel, so two capacitors in total on an amplifier. Uh, this is the capacitor I'm going to change, it's the coupling capacitor, a little signal path capacitor, usually about 0.47 microfarad maybe 0.22 microfarad or 1 microfarad or 1.5 macrofarad, something like that kind of value in your amplifier receiver. And it basically usually links up the preamp maybe to the main amp or something like that, usually just after the loudness uh, and just after the, uh, where are we here? Actually, just after the loudness and volume control. So it comes straight after the volume into the input into your main, into your main part of the amplifier, shall we say. So like I say, it's just a little, little coupling capacitor uh, usually one microfarad, something like that. In this case, it is uh, one microfarad. But if I just put the circuit up on the screen, as you can see, it's a one microfarad capacitor, rate of 50 volts, as indicated by the uh, red arrow. Uh, but the actual green arrow showing you there, also in uh, parallel with it, is a 0 0.047 microfarad capacitor. What's that? 47 picofarads, isn't it? Something like that. That runs parallel to it. Uh, don't usually get that, I haven't got it in the other amplifiers I've got anyway. But uh, so it's going to be a little bit different this amplifier. I may just get a little bit of a different result than I would with an amplifier maybe. But uh, I'm also going to muck about with the same four capacitors. I'm using four different capacitors here. One's the original. I'm going to use, uh, I don't know how these, these are pronounced. Rubicon is another one, an Ichicom, right at the bottom of the screen. And one of these WIMA, Wimmer, whatever you want to call it, capacitors. So they're all going to be the same values. We're going to swap them out, or I'm going to swap them out, and say what I think, if it makes any difference at all to the tonal quality, the actual quality uh, of the uh, output I'm getting from the amplifier. This is an Asansui AU217, I forgot to say that, but I've got a couple of more amplifiers that, uh, I'm not just changing this capacitor and the other amplifiers, I'm actually going to change quite a lot of them. So there's two other amplifiers, and they are uh, just going through them at the moment, because this does take time. Uh, Marantz uh, 1030 amplifier I got that had a little bit of an issue, but hopefully I've cleared that up, and I'm going to do a separate video on that issue as well, as well as Sansui 331 uh, that I've uh, recapped as well. But come to them, we're going to use the same capacitors again, maybe different values, but the same makes, um, same range, and uh, we're going to uh, see how they sound in them particular units. But for now, it's just this particular unit. So what I'm going to do is, uh, like I say, this where it is. The blue arrow there, just, just put a diagram up once very quickly. The blue arrow there is actually showing you where it's coming from the volume control. Uh, that's just after the uh, loudness from the volume control. It's coming in through them little uh, arrows, them little light blue arrows into this capacitor. But like I say, it's also got that 0 0.0471 there as well. But we're just going to change that one microfarad. Uh, so here we go, let's have a look. We're just going to show you, I'm just going to show you briefly, just in case you've got this out, I doubt it very much, but you may have it. Uh, that's it open now, just very quickly. Um, there's the two capacitors I want to change, and to get to them, I'll have to move this shield that's in the way there uh, of a few, I think it's the input control, and that's all shielded. So I took that out of the way, it's given me, there it is with it removed, uh, and we just kind of do a different angle. We can see the two capacitors we're going to get to. So there they are, I've taken them out, a little picture of them, both of them out, and we're going to measure them. Um, did I do both of them? I think I did. It is one of them anyway. It measures uh, 1.04 um, microfarad, uh, ESR 5 ohms, and a V loss of 0 0.4. We go over to the other one very quickly, uh, and it's 1101, 5.1. Uh, and 0 0.5 this just I just thought I'd do a few measurements there you may want to look at them you may not but while I've got them I'm also measuring how accurate this meter is I do not know 
but uh, just to give you some idea. So which ones am I going to put in first? Um, I'm going to tell you about the sound afterwards. This just shows you me putting these in. So uh, just to show you here, we're going to put in one of these WIMA capacitors, WIMA capacitors. Uh, there's the measurement of this particular one. And the other one was very, very close. I make, I make sure that I've got a pair, a match pair. They, they may not be absolutely spot on, but we'll be in a 0.10. Uh, you know, this is 974. The other one may have been 964. Uh, but the VLOS was exactly the same, that they're all zero, all the ones I had. I think one was 0 0.01, but uh, other than that, ESR 1.7. So they're very, very tightly matched, the pair I used uh, to make it um, as closely balanced as possible. So that's that one. There you are. There's a picture of them both in the circuit, just to show you they are in there. Uh, then I've took them out. Uh, then I've decided to use a Rubicon. Uh, there's the Rubicon I've used. Uh, 987 uh, microfarad 3.4 you can see what it is I won't keep on repeating it you can see the measurements yourself now taking these in and out on this board I used a 30 watt iron maybe I should have used just a little bit less I've got a 15 watt iron I just really couldn't be bothered to get it out and uh, I used solar wick rather than one of these sucker things so that's another thing that's probably not helped but uh, I've not really had much trouble to really of, of lifting tracks apart from this amplifier it seems to be uh, they seem to come up fairly easy to a certain extent uh, so I've had to bridge it there, you can see that big red arrow, well the, the track's actually lifted and I put a little piece of wire just to bridge it across there. So uh, after that I decided uh, to actually put the Rubicon, uh, as I'm going to take them in and out, in and out, be sorting them about, fiddling about quite a bit really, uh, to um, do them on the, on the other side of the ball rather than poking them through the holes, do it on this side of the ball, it's easier for me to do and hopefully I'm not going to muck up the board any more than what it is. Now, I'm showing you these, I'll come to you in a minute, I'll come to the next bit I want to say. So that's that one. Um, then we're going over to what we've got here. This is the um, Nichicon, uh, error it said, it's going to be at the bottom of the screen so you can see it. Fine gold one, uh, one microfarad as you can see, 9.35. And that's a match pair of them in there as well. And as you can see, these little 0.047 ones now have actually made it to this side of the board. They were on the other side, but I decided to have a little experiment taking them out as well. So it was just the one microfarad in there as well. See what kind of difference that made. Just a brief little experiment with that as well. So we're going to come to all the experiments in a minute, but just to let you know that after putting these in, I, this is how it comes, it's took quite a bit. I run the amplifier for 24 hours, an old day, when I've been listening to it here, doing something or whatever I was doing something else in the background I didn't really take much attention to it so the following day then actually done the assessment uh, so just to let you know and when, when I went to bed I just left the CD on on, on, the, on the volume on very very low because I don't, don't wake up the old house it was very very low but I did leave it on for 24 hours so basically it's, it's near enough 24 hours it may have been 23 22 one of them may have been 26 27 but I wanted to give it a fair run because I know some people will say that these capacitors need a little bit of a burning. Some might say a few hours, 10 hours, something like that. But I thought I'd give it a full 24. That's what took the time. And obviously doing uh, one lot was already in there, lucky enough, but doing the others, it, it took a matter of days to get all this sort of, quite a few, probably a week or so actually, of doing this particular experiment. Just want to let you know, I've done it as fair as possible. It's just not like just stick them in, sit back, listen to it for five minutes, to take them out and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't like that. So, okay, so unless you see me put them in, taking them out, swapping them over and all that kind of stuff, going to come onto the sound there and how each individual pair sounded. Okay, so what was the idea of the experiment before I get on the sound? Well, it's just, I thought I'd say a little bit of a tinker around. Just wanted to see what one capacitor could do, uh, what kind of difference that could make. And this is an amplifier here, the 217, Sansui 217, an amplifier quite like, uh, I kind of said this is, you know, if, you, if you're looking to get this, get it, but the 317s probably better going by Serial Review X's review and quite a few people say few few forums I read as well seem to agree that the 317 was the one to get out of the 117 the 217 so um, you know it's not a bad amplifier it's quite good you know so I quite like it it's an amplifier I can quite easy to listen to and I do I do whip it out and listen to it so that's for certain so I just wanted to get more a little bit more maybe a tad more detail would be great wouldn't it a tad more detail but for me I wanted to get a little bit more airiness a little bit more space around the instruments and that kind of thing and a tad more top end as well. Just thought it lacked a little bit in the top end. So um, that's what I was trying to get out of it. So that was the idea of just changing these. Now I know some people would say we should do a full recap mix, just bring it back into life. 
Uh, but I only wanted to do an experiment with one capacitor, see if that made any difference at all. And I've changed the capacitors, uh, a, a full recap, apart from the power supply, no, sorry, apart from the smoothing cap, the main smoothing cap, on a couple of amber amplifiers that uh, I'll bring up very, very shortly, just finishing off listening to a couple of things with them. That I've also done the complete change, change these are the capacitors, these coupling capacitors, I've changed in them as well. So uh, see if they make a, any difference and what kind of difference to another amplifier rather than this one. But they're coming up shortly. For the time being, we're gonna go with this one. Like I say, this one's a little bit different because, uh, just put it back up on the screen, we've got that 0 0.047 capacitor in uh, parallel with the capacitor we are changing. Now, before we start, let's just go back over to this picture here. I did take these out with all the capacitors. I've done them with them out and in. And to save me rattling through everything, they're better off staying in circuit. Just leave them in there, well for me anyway. Leave them in circuit, because taking them out, pretty much on all of them, the kind of things that you kind of lose and don't really gain anything. You lose kind of the texture's kind of gone, the timber of the music, you know, the timber of the instruments and that kind of thing. You kind of lose a little bit of that, and you lose a tad, just a tad of bass as well, and you know, just a little bit of that darkness of the amplifier goes as well. So um, for me, leave them in but like I say do the experiment yourself it's all good fun it takes time but it is good fun okay so we'll start off with the Rubicon uh, with the Rubicon uh, first of all uh, I thought the warmness a little bit of the warmness just a tad of the warmness had gone with the amplifier um, the base had got tighter which was good a nice tightness to the base the three-dimensional of the amplifier weren't quite as good as the stock capacitor so um, a little bit of a loss there not quite as airy uh, though it's not that airy anyway but I lost a little bit of the air as shall we say uh, with, against the stock capacitor, so that was another negative. Uh, had a reduced top end as well, the top end, well I want to kind of extend it, I kind of dragged it down just a tad, but it was noticeable. Uh, I had a slight kink about, um, about I'm, I'm guessing a little bit, because I've got no scope or anything like that, it's a little bit of a guess, about one kilohertz thereabouts, just go a little bit either side of that. Just had a very slight kink there, it seems to just bring it up a little bit there, kind of pushed it up a little bit there in that uh, place. Uh, the sound stage was pretty good, that was good, the sound stage was pretty good, so I was quite pleased with the, uh, the overall uh, sound stage there. So that was the Rubicon, uh, so would I keep it in there against the stock capacitor? Well the answer is no, no, I still prefer the stock capacitor, even though it tightened the base, I'd rather the base not quite as tight uh, and get the rest back kind of thing, so you know, it's just a, a little bit of a gain, but quite a bit of a loss. So um, yeah, if you put it on a set of scales, the uh, original capacitor won there, so I'll definitely leave that in. So we go over to the Wimmer, WIMA capacitor. Uh, so what happened with this capacitor? Uh, well, this, this was the worst result for me anyway, for this particular capacitor, even though it was the dearest capacitor to buy. I'm not that expensive, about 50 pence each, 40, 50 B each. Uh, I was expecting a, a bit more from this, to be honest with you, because you do see quite a few people using this capacitor now uh, in uh, the preamp stage and all that kind of thing and the coupling parts of uh, amplifiers and that. I suppose if they're uh, built around them, if that was how they were built, you know, they was in the circuit for you know a particular amplifier and they just replace one like for like, it's, it's got to be fine. But uh, when it's kind of, uh, you've got these electrolytics uh, in this particular amp anyway, um, we're replacing it with this. It, it did make a difference and it made the, the most difference here. Uh, first of all, we lost the base. We lost four, I mean, going by the dial, it goes two, four, six, eight, ten, or whatever it is on this amplifier. I'm going to get it on four definitely, and maybe on occasions to six, to kind of get the base back to where it was. So there's a loss in the base. Uh, just kind of, it kind of lost its tempo. It just, it just, it just lost it a little bit for me. Like you with me, the stand stage was wider. Uh, you know, in between the two speakers, that stand stage was bigger and wider. Um, the instruments were, it weren't greatly placed. They just lacked, lacked the focus, and, and it, just, it just wasn't that good. Let's put it that way. Uh, lost the darkness, the darkness had gone as well. All in all, it was a terrible result, really. You know what I mean? I listened to it, you know, I listened to it through that all day. I had to listen to it, like I did it on two loud, I was tinkering around and all that. But uh, when I actually sat down and listened to it, I thought, well, this is something I'm not going to be able to listen to for too long. You know what I mean? You give it half hour or so, and you're going to get fed up with this, definitely. So that was the worst capacitor by a mile. Now, something I do do, I, do, I probably haven't mentioned it before, but I do wander around the house, especially upstairs from one room to another when I'm listening to music and that, and I've got it on a reasonable volume. And uh, I've done it with all these and other stuff I do as well, and I've done it with all these as well. But, uh, you know, you kind of go out the room and the it's, 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 you know, rhythm's going and all that kind of thing. But, with, you know, you want to get back in there. You think, well, this is where the party is. Let's get back in there. It sounds fantastic there. You know, you're doing something else in the room. You always get back in here. It's all happening in there. 
And that wasn't the case with them with my capacitors. It was like, oh, blimey, that sounds a bit rough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Weren't they eager to get back in? So I weren't too impressed with them. Let's put it that way. I definitely know. I definitely weren't impressed with them. Let's, let's be a bit blunt here, Mick. I weren't definitely weren't impressed with them. But that's on this particular amplifier. Like I say, if you've got an amplifier where they're kind of built up in the circuit, there's lots of them. That's how the amp is built. Maybe a more modern one. They use these. If you're doing like for like, they're probably going to be fine. You know what I mean? But for me, it wasn't that great here. That's on this particular amplifier. And don't forget, we've got that 0 0.047 in parallel with it as well. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But saying that, I took it out, that capacitor, and had them on their own. And it was still the same. But even a tad even worse, if that's such a thing. But there you go. So that's that. So they won't feed for me. So back to the original stock capacitors. So now we're relying on these fine gold capacitors by Nixicon. Uh, and the, uh, these come to the rescue here, the, the, these helped us out, uh, no end. Uh, the darkness, it's gone a little bit, just a tad, oh, not as much as the Rubicon, but just a slight tad of the darkness had gone, and just slight tad of the bottom end, just a slight tad, there it it weren't a lot there, and a little tad of the warmness had gone as well. So we're talking about little tads here, little tads, but we had a nice tight base here, the base was nice and tight, so that, you know, that, that, that's, in, you know that's, that's a good plus sign there for me. Um, that's what else we've got here. Uh, the top end was, well, the, the top end, I wouldn't say extended it, I wanted to extend it, like say this was another thing, just to extend it a bit, but it was just, it was just clear, it was just nice, nice and more detailed to it. It's had a little bit of space around it, trying to get that space I wanted, just, just added a slight touch of space to it, not enough to uh, think, oh this is fantastic, but it definitely helped. Uh, also, it added just a little bit of a free bar dimension to it. Just added a little bit more of a free dimension to it than the stock capacitors. So all in all, uh, these were the ones for me, really. I did lose a little bit. Like I say, I lost a little bit there. A little bit of the warmth, for tad of the base. A little bit of the darkness, shall we say. We just, just lost that little bit. For what we gained, though, uh, these, these sounded nice. You know what I mean? These sounded nice. So uh, I, I think I'll keep these in. Time will tell, probably. But... Um, uh, just like I say, tidying that up that base did make quite a bit of a difference for me and just giving that little bit of uh, crisper top end uh, that was the winners there for me so I've been sitting here about two or three days now listening to that amplifier and off and I quite like it and um, over a period of time some people say these need a bit of a running it may just get a tad better man it may just get a tad better so if they don't, I could put the, you know, if, if I kind of get fed up with it and think this ain't for me, I can probably put the original, I won't put the other two in, let's put it that way, I may revert back to the original, but I very much doubt it, I very much doubt it, I think for me this has done it, the fine gold has just, just prevailed here and uh, give me what I, you know, a bit of what I wanted, not quite, but give me a bit of what I wanted, so um, yeah, I'm pleased with them, uh, I'm going to do the same experiment, like I say, on the other amplifiers, uh, 331 and that Marantz uh, 1030, uh, also, I'm going to bring that Marantz 1030 because uh, I had a little bit of a trouble with that, so hopefully I've cured that now. Uh, if that's the case, I'll bring a video out on that. But uh, we're going to do the same experiment with this, but they're going to be fully recapped with all the other capacitors changed around them as well and see if that Wimmer can kind of poke its nose in front or we're going to get the same result. So that's something to listen out for. I'm in the process of doing all that now. So I'll say until the next video, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Oh, just one more thing before I haven't gone, I haven't gone, stay with me. One thing I will say is that if you do do this experiment, you know, you think, oh, I want to recap my amplifier, maybe just start off with that one capacitor, just see how that one capacitor goes. Nice, easy, little capacitor change, usually fairly easy to get to, not going to cost you a lot of money, uh, especially if you haven't done it before, and you may think that's enough. What I would say is try and get a pack of 10 of each, because you want to get them matched up, so get a pack of 10 of each. So if, you, if you're buying in fine gold, you're buying the women, you're buying the Rubicon or other make, whatever makes there is, there's other makes obviously, get a pack of 10 and get the two that match up as near as possible if, you, if you've got one of them little test meters. They're not expensive to get them test meters, you probably pick up one for about 15 quid. Uh, then again, you can take a chance, but they, they were quite a bit off some of them, you know what I mean? One, you know, some of them measure, say, 984 micro, uh, 0.984 microfarads, and some of them 0 0.932 microfarads. They're two kind of figures that stuck in my mind. So uh, they can be a bit off, so uh, get a pack of 10 of each, maybe, and uh, get that little meter thing, that little tester, and pick the best two, the, the two that match up the nearest, uh, to the value you want as well. Try and get it as near as to the one microfarad you want, rather than matching two lower ones. Okay, that is it now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.